Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to be going over a project that I've been waiting to start for quite a while now. And I finally have everything in place to begin what uh, obviously the title of this video is. Making my own 3D printed Iron Man suit. Now, through this video or mul definitely multiple videos, I'm not going to be really telling you what to do. There's a million different ways you can approach this. Uh, tons of guides between paper craft and 3D printing and EVA foam. There's so many guides out there that if you want to hop on the train for one of those, absolutely go for it. But I'm going to be documenting my own build in the ways that I know. So if I start talking about a technique that maybe you have never heard of or something you just aren't familiar with, drop a comment, message me. Um, I'll share whatever I'm doing to the best of my ability. Um, and with that, there's going to be a lot that I'm going to go over in this video just for getting um, the helmets to kind of look how I did and the type of equipment I'm using, what I'm going to be doing. So I just want to jump into it. And first off, I'll show you guys uh, the equipment and the 3D printer that I'm going to be using for most of this project. Hopefully I can do this on just one and do it all at home. So I'm trying to keep this as DIY as possible. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So first off, what are we using? Um, the setup I'm going to be using for most of this, uh, pending just small upgrades throughout, is a Creality CR-10S. Uh, the only upgrades I've actually done to it at this point are a magnetic bed for just speed because everything I'm going to be printing is mostly going to be done with rafts and supports so I don't need some nice beautiful smooth glass bottom. I need it to print, get it off, and start the next one. Um, I've also gotten a uh, Capricorn um, a Capricorn tube, upgraded that. Uh, I didn't really see have a problem with the first one but everyone recommended this thing as an immediate upgrade. I also moved the spool holder up top. Um, I'm working on Z-axis supports right now, so eventually those will come, but this has been just perfect uh, for me at this point. Um, I get good consistent prints. I'm using a 6.6mm uh, six, six nozzle, but I might mess around with some other ones. I got a couple other ones lined up here. Um, I don't really have any other mods printed. I have the normal bed leveling knobs. Uh, I got a wire extension kit because I put my uh, control box underneath it. And also, I also printed the legs to give it a little bit of boost for cooling. That's about it. Um, I have my own little fire suppression system in the works, but that's just that's something you can Google and look at. So that's what I'm using. It's standard PLA, and a lot of people are probably going to say, "Oh my God, you should definitely print that in ABS because PLA warps." I'm not going to be ever taking this somewhere too hot, and I'm printing it pretty thick, so uh, rigidity and strength, I I'm totally okay with it. Um, I haven't had any issues with the helmets at all to this point. They've been holding up quite fine. And yeah, so let's move on to uh, where I started and where I'm at now. So after the printer was set up, after I got everything kind of running how I thought I needed to, I started messing with uh, the Cura Slicer. Now, Cura has been absolutely great through this whole project. The only problem is, even out of the box, I was trying to use other people's profiles and just there was so much information and misinformation out there that I was getting garbage prints. Um, my Benchy came out all right, so that was that was all right. For my first print, this gave me hope. Only a little bit of a couple of little zits, but I thought this would be good enough. Then I scaled up, and it came out like trash. This was the first top part of this helmet right here, and it was absolute garbage. So I needed to figure out how to get better prints. So after a lot of trial and error, I landed with this. This was a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight piece helmet that I had printed. Um, as you can see, there's still a lot of Bondo on it. It didn't come out good. I needed to fix this bad. Um, the quality was all right. The thickness was okay. It didn't need too much filling, but I still had to glue everything together and get it to be presentable. But there's so many nooks and crannies and just it turned into an absolute nightmare. I had Bondo all over the place. Smoothing this out just was not, it, it wasn't working. Um, the faceplate came out all right because it was one piece. I was able to Bondo and fill it. And if I kept at this, I could probably get it glossy and nice and shiny, just like a piece of metal. But it doesn't even fit in the helmet. And I, it's just, it'd be so much work to finish this. So I kind of stepped back again and tried to look at what am I doing wrong? And that's when I actually stumbled upon the Creosa mod for the, Cura, uh, for the Cura Slicer. And it saved this entire project. I was starting to get really kind of concerned with the quality and maybe this wasn't feasible and I should just quit. But um, I had already invested in the printer and I, I needed to get this to work. I wanted to get this to work. So 
once I downloaded the Cree Awesome mod and search YouTube, Google for it, it, it it's just a bunch of um, preloaded uh, um, profiles and settings to help you print, and it, it was the best thing I ever did. So I downloaded that, started messing with some of those profiles and doing some test prints, and right off the bat, I started getting nice, smooth, quality prints. Now this, is a, this was on the rough, quick setting, um, which even the guy who showed me the video recommended not doing, but this still gave me exactly what I needed. This gave me that little balance of um, speed versus quality. I'm gonna fill these anyway. I'm gonna bond them and paint them anyway. So as long as I can get them out there looking pretty decent, that's all I need. So then I printed the entire helmet. I, uh, I found out that less was mo uh, more in this case. For that one, I just found a random profile of the Mark VI helmet on Thingiverse and printed it out, glued together, and thought that would be enough. This helmet, however, was printed in three pieces. The faceplate right here, and then this whole top piece right here, and then the jaw part. And there's actually a glue line right there that I had filled in, and I'm starting to smooth this over. This has taken so much less time than that ever took. I was able to get this helmet this smooth, the faceplate's pretty much already done. Um, just a couple of little pinholes to fill back in, and then I can actually start painting this. This whole thing was done in the time it took me just to get this faceplate looking like this. So I had a nice, consistent print, and I, um, I believe this whole helmet took roughly 40 hours to print, so nothing too crazy, three pieces. And I didn't really need to fill it in at all or adjust anything. It glued together, faceplate goes in and out perfectly. I think there was just a little bit of supports I had to trim off. Um, I already started adding a hinge system in there. Oh, let me pause and talk about this hinge system for a second. So this is the Mark 85 helmet right here. There are no DIYs for the hinge system on this. Uh, there are tons and tons of guides for it and I just got so overwhelmed with all of them. I decided to start making my own and it's been much easier. If you wanna use one of those guides or whatever, by all means feel free. Um, but what I'm going to do is a much simpler version of, or a simpler version that I think will be to get this to open and close with having to program um, Arduino boards or uh, stepper motors. So hopefully that works out and then we'll obviously get the eyes to light up and this will all be motorized and open, open and close. So I got this helmet, right? Um, again, Cree Awesome Mod printed this basically by itself. Downloaded it, hit print, and eventually I got this. Um, I used a very, very simple uh, Bondo filler. Um, I think it's called Big Boy over here in the UK. Threw some Bondo on it, sanded, primer filler, rinse, repeat. It's the same uh, type of stuff you would do in body work. You would just Bondo over it, try to cut it down, spray some primer over it, keep sanding until it's smooth, and eventually this will be ready for paint. Um, what I used to glue it together was a uh, two-part um, CA glue, cyanoacrylate, I think it's called, and it's been absolutely solid so I'm okay with this it fits my head and that's really what matters this doesn't fit my head as you can see this is pretty small and it's uh, a little too small this was an accident but it was a happy accident um, probably just like your parents but might have told you when you were a kid so what had happened was I was happy with this helmet this is the mark 85 but I wanted to test out some new settings uh, I messed with the the I messed with Cura a little bit more and I wanted to see if I could print the Mark 50 helmet a little bit better just to see quality wise. I did not realize they were not the same size in the file. I totally messed that up. This one was too, a little bit too big for my head. I, I could scale this down one just a little bit. So I figured, hey, this one's probably the same size. Let me scale it down 10%. And now, as you can see, it is way smaller because it was already smaller than this helmet to begin with. I totally didn't scale it, I didn't do any measurements, but it came out, again, pretty friggin' perfect. Um, it's hard to see in this lighting, you can, I mean, you might be able to see some of the layer lines. I didn't do any post work on this. I didn't do any sanding, no filling, no PLA smoothing, nothing. I took it out, broke off some of the supports, scuffed it up a little bit, and painted it. Painted it, uh, um, I think this is Colonial Red, this is like a Rust-Oleum or Krylon Gold, and a Krylon Flat Nickel. Painted it, popped everything off, and the faceplate fits perfect. I am so mad that I printed this thing too small because it might have very well just replaced 
that whole helmet. And this was printed in just two pieces. Uh, I printed it with supports in the back like that, just standing up, and it came out, I mean, absolutely perfect for what I needed. So what's this all amount to? Why do any of you care that you're watching this? Um, why do I care to be sharing this? Uh, I want to. I think it'd be cool to have um, another good little documentation of an at-home build. I thought this would be something that would be incredibly out of my price range. Uh, 3D printer technology has come down so much that it, it's something you can do at home now. And if you have a couple of those little skills to Bondo and paint and fiberglass, um, this is something you could absolutely do. Uh, there's so much stuff on the internet now for tips and tricks and guides that uh, I wanted to give it a shot and I'm hoping documenting it will at least give people the confidence to go and maybe try something like this, a, a budget build that doesn't look absolutely terrible. Um, through the whole process, I'm probably going to be focusing mostly on the Mark 85 suit, the one from Endgame. Though I did end up liking this helmet a little more, the design from Infinity War, the Mark 50. I'm just really mad that this is too small, but I don't know. I think I'm going to focus on the Mark 85. Um, the next video, hopefully this will be painted, and maybe the motors will be in for the automatic faceplate. Um, who knows? It depends on if those Chinese motors get here any slower. I have the switches, I have the wires, I have the plan, I have the hinges, but I'm just waiting on the actual driver motors to show up because I had to be cheap and get them from the other side of the planet. So uh, if you guys have any questions about anything you saw, more details on my uh, 3D printer setup, more details on the programs I'm using and how I'm scaling and what print setups I'm using, message me, drop a comment. Uh, if you want to know more about how I got this helmet to look like this, if you have your own tips or guides or you want to tell me I'm just an idiot for trying any of this or uh, want to yell at me for not using ABS, feel free. Uh, I'll, I'll welcome the conversation. I don't really mind. And hopefully I can give somebody just a little bit more insight on how to do this whole project. So stay tuned and thanks for tuning in.